Hi and welcome to this week's web design video blog. Today we're showing 10 quick and simple tips for using Adobe Dreamweaver. So whether you're a beginner, perhaps new to web design or Adobe Dreamweaver, or even a seasoned developer, hopefully you can pick up a tip or two that you didn't know before when using Dreamweaver. So I've got a page set up here in CS5 and I've simply got my uh, file manager window open and I've got the properties uh, sat here hidden away. You can probably tell that my layout's all very sort of compressed and I've increased the font size of my code view. That's all just purely to make the tutorial as clear and simple as possible. So the first tip that I want to share that not many people realize is that uh, from the file manager that we have here on the right hand side, you can actually drag and drop files from within here and correctly source them in your code view or even in the design view. So for example, let's say we wanted to um, include this style sheet, we can simply drag it into the head of our web page in the code view, and you'll see that that's embedded the style sheet with the correct CSS link tag. Not only that, it's also correctly sourced the file based on our folder structure. And you can also do the same thing with images. Let's say we wanted to include this here in the body, and again, this doesn't matter whether we're in the code view or the design view, you can simply drag and drop images prompts you for an alt tag and again that will in include the image tags and correctly source the file from its location within the folders of your website's directory. So great uh, great tip, um, it doesn't quite work as well with things like PHP includes if you want to include um, files, if you were to simply drag over like a PHP or a HTML file it will just uh, link to it like so which isn't really that useful but for things like uh, CSS and images can work uh, pretty well, saves a few seconds. So the second tip, again, um, not many people know about this one, if you were to open up your properties tab, let's just give that a refresh, and let's say that we wanted to link this uh, free UK delivery uh, perhaps to one of the pages within our local directory, you could manually type out an, an anchor tag and link the file through that way, you could type out the link address in this properties panel. But what I like to do, particularly for perhaps non-dynamic websites, is use the link targeting tool. So you click on this, and you drag this arrow after you've selected some text, obviously, or an image, and highlight the file that you wish to link to. And again, much like what we were looking at a moment ago with dragging and drop, um, you get the anchor tag inserted along with the correct URL to find the image that you just linked through to. So link target tool, quite useful, particularly if you're making um, simple static HTML websites. So our third tip is how to embed special characters correctly and having a quick look at the tools that Dreamweaver gives web designers for doing that. So you might be aware that um, if you were to simply on your web page, I don't know, type out a special character like the copyright symbol like that, like you might do in, in Microsoft Word, for example, it can look a little bit odd sometimes, depending on how you're um, declaring your document type. These can end up looking like squares on certain computers if they're not embedded correctly. So the best thing to do is uh, to use proper HTML character embedding, and Dreamweaver's got some great tools to help you uh, locate the correct code. Now, all special characters start with an ampersand, so what you can do, if you're in the code view, for example, is type your ampersand, and you'll see that you get the code prompter here, with a little scroll bar, give you access to all of the special characters that are compatible with HTML. What you can also do is go to insert, make you down to HTML, special characters, there's a few common ones just here, but if you go to other, you'll get a grid of about 100 special characters and you can use this to insert the character that you're looking for. That way, if you embed it uh, in this method, you'll know it's going to work cross-platform and not have any, any problems at all. So if you're anything like me, um, I like to have clean and tidy source code when I produce and develop my websites. And Dreamweaver's got some great tools to help you tidy up the code. You'll see here it's all sort of sucked to the left-hand side. You, know, you might find on... Uh, some code views, it's all sort of blocked together and it's uh, not necessarily that easy or pleasant to work with. 
So in the code view, in the left-hand sidebar, Google offers, uh, sorry, Google, Dreamweaver offers you the source code formatting button. And you can apply source formatting to your document. And you'll see that it sort of nicely staggers um, and indents your code according to the sort of parent tags that you're using, which just makes the code a little bit easier to look at when you're working in the code view. Uh, in addition to that, if the sort of um, automatic tabbing and so forth uh, that's given and provided to you by source formatting isn't enough, simply select some of the code that you want to move around and you can use tab like I'm just doing here to sort of uh, indent it as per your liking. Okay, now also with source formatting, um, one of the things that I've discovered in uh, Dreamweaver is that you can source format your uh, CSS as well. Now a lot of style sheets use this sort of format here where styles are sort of um, contained and then indented on single lines like you see here. Now I've got my source code like I mentioned zoomed in by the fact I've increased my uh, typeface size just purely so you can see the the code that we're looking at. But usually when uh, this is the regular size you'll notice that all your CSS is sort of um, in a really slender column on the left hand side of your style sheet, uh, much like we have in the example here. What I like to do is open up Dreamweaver Preferences by going to uh, Dreamweaver and then Preferences. If I slide the Preferences panel over, you see on the left hand navigation we've got Code Format, Advanced Formatting, and if we select CSS we can essentially um, deactivate this, so each property on a separate line no thanks. And you see that what that does is that it essentially allows all the uh, CSS to be in line. So now if we source format our CSS, it brings it all in horizontally. And because we're actually, um, we have less lines, now a moment ago the CSS I think was about 6,000 lines, we've now brought it back down to 2,600 it actually saves on the file size. So not only do I prefer to work with my CSS in long lines like this, it also cuts down a little bit on the file sizes of your style sheets. So another great tip if um, if you find that useful. Okay, so let's save that and go back to our HTML. Now there's another sort of essentially primitive tool within Dreamweaver that I sort of tend to use every now and then, and it's the cleanup HTML tool. Uh, so if you go into commands, you'll see clean up HTML. Again, if we bring this over, this is a really good tool for removing unnecessary HTML tags. And you can remove um, any tags from your HTML page, like if you've got any empty containers like um, bold headings, redundant nested tags, uh, non-Dreamweaver HTML comments, special markup, and you can even specify particular tags. So for example, let's say you're converting a website, perhaps you're bringing it um, up to modern day standards with uh, style sheets, and maybe the old website's made in uh, tables and font tags. You can actually um, highlight some tags that you simply want to remove from the entire page. So quite a useful tool, um, particularly if you're um, new to web design and you're trying to tidy up some redundant areas of your web page, but use this one with caution because if you remove some empty tags, depending on how you've constructed your website, if you're using modern divs and CSS methods, if you leave empty tags lying around, you, you can be if you're not too careful, you'll actually remove them and break your design. So, the cleanup HTML uh, tool can be quite useful. Uh, just be careful and check your work if you do choose to use it to help you remove unwanted or empty HTML tags, for example. Now, another cool um, tip that I've only discovered recently is the code minimization feature in Dreamweaver. So if we scroll down to the bottom of this um, template page that I have here uh, in Magento, now I've got some inline JavaScript here that's at the very bottom of uh, the page, and it appears um, on all pages of this website that use this template. Now, if, you're, if you've got a lot of code um, on the page at any one time, and you know you're not really going to need to change it, one cool thing that you can do is minimize it. So let's select all of this JavaScript. You'll see just in between the code and the line numbers in the code view, you've got this little arrow. If you push that, 
it minimizes the code for you into a little block. It doesn't remove it, it just sort of simply hides it in Dreamweaver. And you can click it and it comes right back. So that can be really useful. Again, I've got some PHP here. And this is our uh, PHP latest tweet code that you might find useful. Um, if I was to select all that, again, I've uh, tried and tested this. It's working really well. So why not perhaps minimize it? Ooh. As we're not going to need to edit it again. So almost like using includes, it's quite a helpful tool if you've got a lot of code on the page, but you just want to focus on certain areas of it. Another great tool is find and replace. Now, find and replace, and I've just brought this tab up by pushing Command and F. A bit like find and replace you have in Word and Excel. You can actually use this to perform um, multiple tasks for you. Let's say for every um, a bullet point we have on the web page, we wanted to add a class. Instead of having to manually type this out and find every bullet point, we can use the find and replace tool to perform tasks just like this. Replace all. And if we try and find some bullet points look like these ones up here, you'll see they've automatically had the class added to them. So another great feature there. Um, not only is, you know, is it useful for perhaps word processing and spreadsheets, I use it quite a lot in, uh, in my code, whether I'm, you know, again, opening up someone else's work, perhaps they haven't used special characters, I might find and replace all of the pound signs um, with correctly um, embedded pound uh, special characters. Another great feature in Dreamweaver is it's got a lot of built-in tools to help you check the quality of your work. It's got everything from um, code validation, similar to the W3C validation, to some cool tools um, like here on file check page. You can check your browser compatibility, your spelling, and you can even look for dead links. Now the built-in spell checker in Dreamweaver has never been notoriously that fantastic, so I'd always recommend checking your work in perhaps more powerful um, spell checking tools like Microsoft Word, but nevertheless, the fact that it's built in and can help you on the way is a good feature. So our final tip is the upload shortcut icon, which is probably the most common tip that I use myself all the time. So if you're working on a page and you want to upload it, um, you're probably familiar with the fantastic built-in FTP client in Dreamweaver. You can click the file and simply upload it to the server by pushing the little blue arrow. The shortcut to do this, particularly if you're testing your website live on the internet, is to hold down Shift, Command or Apple and simply push U. And that will upload the page for you onto your web page. So 10 nice and uh, quick and easy tips. Hopefully um, one or two of them might be useful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or even any tips of your own, please don't hesitate to leave them on the supporting blog post or on our YouTube channel.